Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. So I did a dual movie review this week, you know, just cleaning up, you know, fixing something here and there, and decided so to watch some movies that I have in my collection. As I stumble across uh, through my yellow cabinets, you know, I figure, you know, I do have some movies, like Blu-rays and DVDs, some of which I haven't opened, you know. So I, I just stumble across uh, a movie that's pretty forgotten over the years, almost from a memory wipe. But I guess if you had to refresh your memory, I'm pretty certain that people would actually check it out for yourself through viewings. And that is um, a mystery uh, action thriller, Paycheck. I got this uh, on Blu-ray at Ross, just for less. Yep, and this proves it right here. For only $9.99, already open. <laughs> it was sealed up. I bought this a long time ago, actually. <laughs> I never opened it, but I had seen the film before, like a long time ago, before I picked this up. Um. It's based on a short story by Philip K. Dick, the same man who gave us uh, Total Recall, Blade Runner, and Minority Report that he wrote. And it's directed by Hong Kong filmmaker John Woo, who's been known for giving us Hard Boil. But he came to America to do films like Hard Target, Broken Arrow, Face Off. And even went on to direct the sequel to Mission Impossible, which, that was awesome. And he did actually do a World War II uh, drama with Nicolas Cage called Wind Talkers that eventually he did this film, which turned out to be his final film in America. He just moved on to do other things. And this stars Ben Affleck as a reverse engineer, you know, very successful, you know, trying to um, demonstrate uh, every product here and there, such as 3D technology, to see which one is better than the other. Unfortunately, he was being accused of, of infringement laws, so by protecting his intellectual property uh, with his friend, he decided to take um, a three-year uh, job, you know, working with his uh, college mate, which is a CEO company where his memory has been wiped, only to discover that, um, well, <laughs> he has like 19 items, well, it's supposed to be 20, but one got taken off, to actually um, save his entire life, since he forfeited the money. He was already in trouble, big time, and that's what the story goes. Um, it co-stars with Uma Thurman, um, best known for films like um, Pulp Fiction, as well as uh, Kill Bill, came out the same year as this, and Aaron Eckhart uh, from films like In the Company of Men, uh, Meet Bill, and The Dark Knight. Which, um, interestingly enough, <laughs> all three of these stars were in Batman movies. Yes, of course. Uh, Furman eventually played uh, the sensualist uh, Poison Ivy in the dreaded uh, Batman and Robin sequel. Eckhart, of course, uh, went on to play the intelligent political candidate uh, Harvey Dent which he'll soon become a tortured soul as Two-Face and Affleck playing the successful playboy uh, Bruce Wayne from Wayne Enterprises aka Batman <sighs> such irony here <laughs> um, now I wasn't expecting much from this movie when it came out 
because at the time Affleck was having a bad career choice you know with several of his films that you know often gets hated well, that was the case for me too because I was not a huge fan of Ben Affleck but at times like this I did enjoy uh, Good Will Hunting which is the film that he wrote uh, joins in with his best friend Matt Damon and of course Robin Williams who won the Oscar who's no longer around sadly you know but he's a funny comedian and actually a great dramatic actor too but still it it earned him something and it was special but of course they both went on to do the Kevin Smith movies and he was great in those in my opinion um, but when it comes to like some thrillers or like some different kind of movies you know that's where I sort of turn myself off with the actor himself when he plays these typical characters because he's always totally wooden you know always acting so arrogant trying to be smart but he acts like a jerk not to mention annoying too that's what ticks me off when it comes to Affleck I mean I was never impressed with films like Armageddon Pearl Harbor two of which are Michael Bay films uh, Changing Lanes uh, with um, Samuel Jackson, yeah, I w was not impressed with that film at all. I did not care for uh, Reindeer Games uh, with um, Charlie's Farron. I mean, I don't know, I just, I just didn't buy that at all. That's how I felt. And 2003 was definitely one of his worst years when it comes to free films that he's done. But out of the three films, this one was better. I mean, Daredevil, incredibly miscast as the blind lawyer, um, Matt Murdock, a.k.a. Daredevil. I mean, even though it did have a nice cast, some nice action scenes here and there, but, it, but deep down of it, it was a disappointment. Geely, on the other hand, was way, way worse because Affleck at the time was um, was ready to to get married to Jennifer Lopez, aka J Lo, and that just yeah, I mean this this was one of the biggest uh, hype of them all, and they were going to star in their movies together. And that turned out to be a disaster for a crime, comedy, and drama. And, yeah. But, that's where I felt when this movie was coming out. It actually came out on Christmas Day. About the box office, like, it only made $92 million out of its um, $61 million. It wasn't exactly a hit as we expected, it was just what it was. I mean, it just made its profit, that's all. But it wasn't, you know, like a huge success as they were hoping it would be. Um, but yes, it got dismissed by critics, um, even audience alike, you know, people started to hate the guy. I guess Affleck was one of the problems. Um, but looking back at the film, actually it wasn't that bad at all. Um, I think it's a lot better than its reputation had received. So that's what I expected. And it's a nice Blu-ray. It's actually very um, solid. An amazing transfer. It has all the features uh, directly from the 2004 uh, Special Collector's Edition that's on the back. And yes, it does have some French writing in here. <laughs> it says La Paya. <laughs> well, this was a French-Canadian uh, Blu-ray, which I know Ross always sells all these uh, DVDs and Blu-rays that were in French, as you can see. <laughs> um, but generally speaking, it's the same Blu-ray as you can find in North America. And because... Canada is part of North America too, just 
just in a whole different um, region here. Um, also, the fact that this movie was actually filmed in Canada, yeah, Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, uh, but some of which were actually set in Vancouver, Washington, which is the Seattle area near, yeah, which is near Seattle. So I guess it was going for that particular. So anyway. And this is one of the earlier Blu-ray releases. I mean, when Paramount uh, was dumping the HD DVDs, since that became defunct. Yeah, so this is what it looks like <laughs> right here. It has the important notice where they tell you that if you have firmware problems on your old Blu-ray player, um, it's better to upgrade or you know, update it or so, but hey, it does work on my new Blu-ray player that I had since 2015, so, um, well, it's still new, but it's, it's been like, you know, five years. Anyway, let's get started. Stars Ben Affleck, Uma Furman, Aaron Eckhart, Con Farrar, Peter Friedman, Paul Giamatti, Michael C. Hall, uh, before he went on to do the TV show Dexter, uh, Catherine Morris, Krista Allen, who's a model, and Joe Morton from Terminator 2 Judgment Day, along with um, Speed. It's uh, written by Dean uh, Georgiagaris, um, which is based on the novel by Phil K. Dick of the same title. And it's directed by John Woo. The movie begins set in the near future. We meet a reverse engineer named Michael Jennings, played by Ben Affleck, who's analyzing his client's um, competitor's technology, you know, using a 3D uh, projection of a female model that's um, artificial intelligence, where it showcased, you know, what was it like when you see the, um, the 3D model directly from a computer monitor. So you see the background and you see the image, you know, closer than you think. But what would it be like if you take the, the background out through the monitor and you actually see it up close directly like a holographic field? I mean, it looked as realistic as possible. So yeah, the model was uh, played by Krista Allen, sort of like a AI um, Max Headroom right there, but it's a female model, yeah, almost like the movie Simone, you know, with Al Pacino as a uh, a 3D uh, actress. <laughs> yeah, okay. Unfortunately, he's being caught by infringement laws. And in order for him to protect his client's intellectual property and himself, um, decided to take advice from his best friend Shorty, played by Paul Giamatti, to undergo a memory wipe to remove all the knowledge of his engineering. So he's being contacted by his college roommate, James uh, Redfick played by Aaron Eckhart, who's a CEO of technology company known as Alcom. So he offers a free year job, which he will be required to stay in the campus by exchanging company stock, hoping that he'll be able to make more money and be able to earn his living. Um, he hesitated at first, but eventually he agrees, um, and that's where he's being injected with a memory marker. And he was given a tour directly straight from the campus, and that's when, which he just first met um, during the conversation around, um, he was flirting with a biologist named Dr. Rachel Porter, who's played by Uma Furman. 
He's also being introduced to his work partner, who's a physicist named William Deckard, who's played by Sarge Holy. And that's when, um, after this conversation, yes, this is where we learn that his memory's been wiped. And that's just where it goes directly three years later. He's being awakened and was very congratulated by with Vic. And then he found out that his outcome stock had earned him, get this, over $92 million. So he was about to go see his lawyer just to get the funds that he receives. Except he discovers that he gave all the stock away weeks ago. And he was given an envelope that claims in his procession that receives 20 items. Well, basically 19 because it, that counts the rain that's been taken away from, from some random uh, skateboarder you know, during the chase. It was like uh, the pieces to the puzzle. Like he needs to solve all of this stuff in order for him to survive. So he soon finds himself being detained by the FBI, and that's where we meet Agent Dodge, played by Joe Morton, joins him with his partner, Special Agent Klein, played by Michael C. Hall, who interrogate him about how did he uh, got involved in classified government designs and all this other patents that he signed through his signature. But he doesn't remember. He, he, didn't, he doesn't even know who did all this. I mean, someone must have... Uh, must have accused him of a forgery or something like that, if that was the case. But he know that he didn't do all this. So it was taken directly from Deckard. And I know, not to be confused with the Deckard from Blade Runner, but no, this is a different Deckard. But he was already dead. As we, as we found out, Jenny just couldn't answer the question. And suddenly, you know, he was about to be taken directly into the machine, so that way they'll be able to trace his memory, you know, going through, um, you know, time viewing. So it's like time travel in a way, but you get to see what happens in the future. He escapes, you know, just when the, he took out one of those packs of cigarettes that um, Dodge had started to smoke. And that's where the smoke detector alarm went off. And that's just where it causes uh, a smoke alarm, you know, just shooting out all the smoke, like gas. And he, he was ready to escape. And he was going directly, um, you know, through the, uh, the bus, you know, because he had a bus ticket. So he was going to go directly, you know, trying to rethink using all these items. Um, trying to see what connects uh, all of that that um, he was uh, trying to think clearly like a puzzle and I, I like how he's putting all this stuff together like a question mark um, on at a hotel bed uh, so he meets um, Shorty it's been a long time he makes contact he also tries to make contact about something from a match where it was from a local bank but then he realized it was actually a restaurant so it was underneath it um, but yeah he was making contact with Shorty and then he also discovers uh, those lottery numbers um, that was something out of a uh, fortune cookie that's left in and he realized that he actually won and he figures it out uh, through his mind that it's, it's what's said in the future. But he's being chased down by a bunch of agents, um, all hired by um, We Think. So there was like a long chase scene uh, straight into um, the subway station, you know, where he goes all the way straight into the tunnel. Um, Shorty actually had to go directly. Uh, through the uh, security basement so he'd be safe and he has to take down all these agents around and that that's where 
he goes all the way straight to the tunnel, being chased by those guys, trying to stop him. You know, you know, just using the hairspray and the the lighter that he has, you know, to stop one of them and actually have both of them shoot themselves. And then one of them, which is uh, Wolf, played by Colin Farrell, actually uh, spots him. And he was being chased down by the particular subway. Yeah, he almost got run over. But luckily, you know, he was safe. So, anyway. Yeah, John Wolf, of course, um, is the right-hand man of Refick. So he hired him to, to go after him. And to watch what he's doing. Um, so then... Um, he was trying to find out where um, Rachel Porter is at, somewhere, where she's actually at all calm. You know, she was just doing her um, her bio lab, so where they, you know, they plant um, lots of flowers and plants around and everything. Like they have their own garden, but she did learn that Jennings had left left her behind and wasn't so sure if he was going to come back but then he f she figures it out by writing a message um, on the mirror at the bathroom to note that you know she'll be able to find him so they found him at uh, at a local cafe as he figured it out that's where he meets this woman that turns out to be someone else that Refik must have just added her just so that way he, he can next steal one of the items that he has in his envelope. But little do we know, Jennings actually creates a smart move by telling her, by guessing, uh, what's his favorite baseball team. And that's when the <laughs> Rachel had finally came to the rescue to save him. That's what she reveals. And then they escape with um, all of uh, Riffix's agents chasing them around. Um, and that's where he found what at first he thought that a BMW key that he has was directly through all these BMW cars around the, the lots. But it turns out that it was a motorcycle. So they escape through the motorcycle being chased down by all the agents from Allcom and not only that but being chased down by Seattle cops they go directly straight into um, all the other streets and then directly into the construction sites yeah, going through the tunnels and then finally made it to a local campus to stay out which is a um, a college campus and this is where um, he begins to you know refresh his memory to find out that after three years I mean he was actually with uh, Rachel the whole time but he just couldn't remember until he figured it out by looking at all these uh, photographs of him along with her and those two pigeons in a birdcage and this is where he realized that he made a big mistake. And he, he felt bad about that. Then, the next morning, he, you know, just looking around um, at the local campus, uh, he then discover uh, through the envelope, yeah, all these mail stamps of Albert Einstein is when he actually took a glimpse at one of the stamps that actually has a clue straight in the eye of Albert Einstein. He uses a magnifying the lens uh, to give it a close-up so he actually went straight to the classroom uh, during the uh, which is the science class and that's where he went straight into um, the telescope to find out where all of these uh, secrets that's inside the eye turn out to be um, the future of uh, newspaper uh, reports 
about what's going to happen after this is all done. Well, it turns out, and this is going to be the biggest spoiler of them all, was that he actually created the machine in Alcom. And it also creates the future where it's, it's going to cause not only the stock plummeted, but it's also going to start a nuclear war that's going to happen. Yeah, so because of that, he decided to um, find a way to access Alcom because he has the, the security card, so he'll be able to go inside, discover the machine that he created, and that way he can actually destroy it. But it's going to be a difficult time for him to do so once, um, yeah, once um, Ref Refic and um, the rest of the agents around are going to go after him, along with Rachel, you know, before it's too late. And that's basically what the story goes in Paycheck. Now, yeah, the title may seem pretty odd, I mean, for a movie like this, yet alone the story, um, but it's actually well done. I mean, it may be clunky and shallow, if you think about it, maybe in the plot holes is exactly what we expected when we see it, because it's actually well done. It wasn't that bad at all. Um, I think the performances were very solid as it seems. I mean, Affleck actually surprisingly did a great job. I mean, I could have considered uh, his buddy uh, Matt Damon to play the parts. In fact, interestingly enough, this was originally written for Matt Damon, as John Woo suggested it, but seeing that, you know, he was ahead of schedule there, and, and of course, he already did do The Bourne Identity as Jason Bourne, I guess maybe Affleck had to be the right choice but but I guess I could have settled for other actors to play the parts besides Affleck I mean I would imagine you know any other actor would have played that part and would have done it so much better uh, but with that aside I thought he was very decent and actually improved better I mean I guess in a way it's like a Hitchcockian thriller as they described it yeah in fact there's a bit of a nod to North by Northwest, you know, where it's about a, a guy who's not exactly, you know, a Superman of sorts or or a James Bond type of uh, secret agent. But he's just basically an ordinary man who's just getting involved in all these uh, strange situations. And and the fact that he's getting into bigger trouble, and it was, it was up to him to actually save his life, you know, through... Um, through, through clues here and there that he was given. Um, there's some nice action scenes that were in the film, but it was only three of them that I could think of because it wasn't enough. Um, I love the subway station scene. I thought that was very impressive. Um, same goes with the motorcycle chase. I mean, the fact that you get to see like some impressive stunt work I mean, Affleck himself actually did 90% uh, of his stunts. Yeah, he didn't want to use a stunt double to do that. Um, but but it definitely um, had a lot of uh, nice scenes here and there of explosions, you know, where the car goes straight into the tunnel or the, and explodes or the, the, the other uh, car went straight through the bulldozer and it flips off. Or how about the scene where the two cars connected and then, then the other car actually crashes from uh, a nearby the big rig, or the scene where uh, he uses uh, the motorcycle and suddenly uh, try to, which of course that's where the car flips over for the bulldozer, where he's trying to, you know, use his mo use the motorcycle and just, uh, sh you know, swerve out all these uh, rocks straight into the windshield. I thought, wow. And that was really amazing. And then, and then there's even a scene where they went straight into the tunnel, uh, trying to 
<coughs> trying to pass uh, all the cops behind that were chasing them. And there's a scene where he ex where he where the the cop actually went straight into the tunnel, but then it crashes straight through the roof t the roof of the car as he's trying to go through, and then. Uh, Rachel actually takes out the helmet and throws it straight at the cop. I thought, wow. <laughs> it knocks him out and it stops and they escape. And even the, um, the bio lab uh, was very impressive. I mean, you see the flashback scenes, what's going to happen as he thinks uh, through his memory or having nightmares about it that um, his character was going to get killed. Uh, you know, time viewing and time travels all the way straight through the machine where it controls uh, directly through um, the palm ball, you know, palmetry that it went into. Uh, there, there was a lot of red herrings in the film that really tells the story apart. So it, it actually, it does get predictable, but it does contain all these elements that you know what's going to happen. Um, so it was perfect. Uh, so it was interesting too when, when you think things through. Uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, the bio lab scene uh, back back to that was amazing with all these action scenes here. I mean, yes, you do see the Mexican standoff, especially in the subway station too, or yeah, the dove that that appears. Yeah, so. This is basically John Woo's trademark that he loves to throw in into his movies. I mean, yeah, the f the action scenes are not particularly over the top, uh, um, wall to wall, you know, balls to the walls uh, type of action that you're expecting it to be, because it's rather tame. I mean, this is a PG-13 mystery thriller, so it's not R-rated as you expected. But for the the intelligent writing. As it seems, even if it's complicated, it is a routine sci-fi flick. Now, going back to um, the cast, um, besides Affleck, um, I thought Aaron Eckhart definitely steals the show as a very uh, intelligent uh, villain who does have a tortured soul himself. But you know, he's really you know up for grabs. That he was ready to actually, you know, go after Affleck. Um, Uma Furman, on the other hand, um, was um, very amazing as his love interest um, for Jennings. Um, in fact, um, and yeah, she did some, she did some action scenes that I really wish she'd done more. I mean, especially after she. Played uh, the bride in Kill Bill, came out the same year, of course. Um, but he, she did study it, and I, I do wish there were more of, of her actually kicking ass. Um, but that's, but I guess you know, Affleck did more of the kicking ass anyway. <laughs> um, especially when he was about to stop uh, after those agents and then try to go after uh, Eckhart's character. Yeah. Yeah, especially with the scene with the with the rope <laughs> and dragging them all the way up to the top. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Paul Giamatti um, was hilarious. Uh, yeah, I mean he was a comic relief. I, I like him. Um, in fact, I love him actually. <laughs> and he, you know, it, it was pretty fun that he actually has a a best friend and buddy. You know, was get was showing him the ropes about what he does, and he's only there for like you know certain scenes. I mean, so he's, so I do wish you know he was in the movie more, but it's it's nice to see him and and Joe Morton along with Michael C. Hall were were great and Con Farrar, uh, who's the handyman, definitely takes all the action. So. Um, has a nice cinematography by Jeffrey L. Kimball. Uh, has a amazing score by John Powell. John Powell. I could definitely see it. You know, it gives it a tingling feel. 
And it's a very emissive um, direction by John Woo. And he's also the producer for the film, too. And joining in with other producers, including Terrence Chain and John Davis. For the movie, you know, it, it's definitely worth it. I mean, it could have been a lot worse, but I couldn't believe that I actually enjoyed it, too. <laughs> so, to me, I think this is one of his better films uh, to come out, despite the fact that it got a critical reception and got some hate. I mean, Affleck did earn a ratsy, as it seemed. I find it really interesting, too, because from what I heard, when he was on Larry King Live on CNN, he actually was presented on there, but his rat seed was broken. <laughs> and it was sold on eBay. <laughs> Unbelievable, having to hear that story. Because I never saw it. I'm glad the film did got a cult following, but otherwise, you know, I think it really does deserve some credit. So, so yes, I do like the movie. So that's Paycheck, and I give the film three and a half stars, and I really mean it. <laughs> I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.